All right, this is part two of our stress lectures. It's really important to understand what occurs, what happens inside our bodies when we experience stress. Now, it's not going to stop stress in your life. Remember, nobody gets to opt out. But if we understand and can recognize the fact we're going through a stress event, we can actually start to do something about it. Now, this is the simplest way I can possibly put it. This might look complicated, but this truly is the most simple way I can put it. So a stress event occurs. Again, the fancy pants word for this is stressor. So a stressor occurs. Your body gets all of the messages from the environment. Your body then chooses how it's going to react. Your heart does certain things. Your lungs do certain things. Your adrenaline gets pumping in your adrenal glands. Your entire body goes through a physical response. And then, after that, you typically react. And there's one of two things that happens. Your body either replays or reinforces the stressor. In other words, you obsess about the stress event. And this isn't always bad. You know, you burn your hand on a stove as a child, and that trauma, <laughs> that stress event, reminds you that stoves are hot. Okay, and it keeps you from repeating that mistake. Well, when you actually do the learning, you get to adapt or learn. That's the adaptive side of stress. However, when you keep reliving that stress again and again and again through flashbacks, nightmares, and what we call intrusive thoughts, things that cause you to doubt yourself, it just like repeating the same stress event again and again and again. We call that, again, PTSD or CPTSD, um, post-traumatic stress disorder or chronic persistent toxic stress disorder. Um, this happens through something called, and again, this is a little more complicated, your HPA axis, your hypothalamus, your pituitary gland, and adrenal glands. Those work together. So again, you have this little stress response. Your brain responds. It sends chemicals throughout your body, your heart, your stomach, your liver, your adrenal glands, your colon, your, your bladder. All of it starts to act in a way that's going to help you handle and hopefully, eventually, recover from stress. Um, the cycle of trauma is very similar to the very first diagram that I showed you. The idea here is simple. You're born. That part, we know. <laughs> How you are raised in the first few years of your life, particularly the first 6 to 18 months, really causes your brain to become... Well, you can think of it like a crystal. Um, I call it the DCPA, the dynamic, Perce uh, CPA, dynamic Central Perceptual Axis. Think of it as just your brain crystal. And your brain pulls in information. The light goes into the crystal, if you will. And your brain perceives the world through those first learning experiences, your first 6 to 18 months. Um and then your brain kind of thinks that way the rest of your life. It can be changed, but it's, it's a little bit hard to stop that first 6 to 18 months. Um, your body has, this is yes, this is a real word, a stress response system, which is ultimately called your biopsychosocial neuroimmunoendocrinological system that also uses your cardiological system, <laughs> your digestive system. Your bodies respond to new stressors in the environment, new stress events with uncertainty, lack of information, a loss of control, or conflict. If you think something is a threat, one thing happens. If you think it's a, th if your body's like, yeah, nah, it's not that much of a threat. Like when your siblings scare you suddenly, you're like, oh, there's not a real threat. Okay, I'll just keep watching out in case there is a threat, but I, I, I'm going to go ahead and de-escalate. But if you do think there is a threat, your body goes through three, uh, basically, lenses. There's a physical change. You change your relationship to yourself and your environment, your social change. And then you have a change in your mental state. 
okay? If you are in a position where you can act, where you can externalize, you can express your emotion, you can actually attempt to make a change, you can basically interrupt that stressor or you can gain power over it. That allows you to learn and for your uh, mental lenses to change and become more in depth and allows you to reach a new normal. This is the adaptive stress. But again, if you're, let's say, in a classroom, let's say sixth grade, and you really had to pee, for instance, and the teacher wouldn't let you, and you ended up having to pee yourself or almost peed yourself on the way to the bathroom, or maybe you just left because you had to go so bad and you got in trouble for it. That was repressing your body's natural way of doing things. Well, if that keeps happening again and again and again and again, you get into habits. And these habits can cause increased destabilization. In other words, they can make you less stable. Eventually, that instability becomes normal. And then your body seeks its familiar old ways, which is one of the reasons some people never grow up. Their bodies have become so riddled with stress, so constantly bombarded with stress, they basically stay children forever. We call this the cycle of trauma. Our goal is to get out of this circle and into a better, more adaptive new normal. That's what I see my ultimate job as, is helping you guys find ways to love, be love, and become something more. This is the end of part two of our stress lectures.